Good morning, Denise Dryden here out on Bainbridge Island. And today I wanna to talk to you about the concept of susceptibility. You know, what does it mean when we're susceptible? And we want to, I wanna talk about sort of where those targets are. You saw that picture I put up, some of our weaknesses and ways that we can strengthen ourselves, right? Because when we're susceptible, it means that, and I'm gonna go through the dictionary um, definitions so that you have them, right? It means we're, when we're likely or liable to be influenced or harmed by a particular thing, person, or event. Likely or liable to be influenced or harmed by a particular thing, person, or event. It's when we're easily affected. It's when we're influenced by. It's when we're impressionable, right? It's when something comes and goes like, gotcha. Or, you know, it is something that, that, that sort of sets us back something that takes us off guard, catches us when we're off guard. So emotionally, it's when we're easily influenced. You know, this happens a lot with teens. It happens a lot with the elderly. It happens a lot when we're sad or when we're desperate. You know, we're, we're kind of holding on for something like, please tell me what to do. It happens when we're physical, in our physical and medical issue, when we're sort of predisposed towards something, which means our body is weak, our immune system is down, our organs are compromised, that there's something going on, and we lack the ability to resist. It's when dis-ease can move in. So when we really look at this word, this is huge, absolutely huge. The idea that someone, something, has a pathway directly into us, into our body, into our nervous system, into our emotions, into our ability to hold ourselves and thrive, it means that we have some weak areas that need to be um, fixed. And that, you know, I kind of look at it like they're gaping holes in our energy system. They're spaces where things come in and, and derail us. So sometimes we know about these and sometimes we don't have a clue. So they're blind spots. They might even be something that we thought we, we had healed, but they're still there. And I wanna say that they are known to others and they are used by others, <laughs> especially if you're raising children, especially if you're in a dynamic relationship. It doesn't mean that that person's good or bad or right or wrong. It does mean that they are aware that you have these buttons that can be pushed and that they're going to push them. There are spots where you can be pushed and triggered and hurt and manipulated and used. So teens are really good at this. Our partners are good at this when we're in arguments. Our colleagues are good at this, our bosses. Even complete strangers, when they know like, wow, I bet you she's a little weak in that area, they wanna give you a zinger, whether you're wearing a mask, whether you're um, <coughs> going the right way in the grocery store, whether you're dressed appropriate. I mean, you know, like fill in the gaps. You know what your reaction areas are. So susceptibility is when the external has access to the internal. It has access to the sacred. It has access to you. And I've talked a lot about this in the last months, about how those in external reactions cause internal reactions, and that the primary reason for that is in our relationships. So now let's go a bit bigger and a bit deeper, okay? We have a physical body. We have a conscious desire to protect and nourish our bodies, right? And our bodies are the way that we move around in this earth. Yet there are some global practices that have been compromising us and compromising our bodies, making us susceptible. So there's two areas I wanna go after. One is, and, and I was watching um, Dr. Zach Bush, and he's been talking a lot about what happens when we have compromised our physical body? He's an internist, right? He is a medical doctor who's talking constantly about where the human body is compromised. So one of the things that he talked about was um, glyphosate, you know, which is that herbicide that's in Roundup. And so it really, really came onto the scene in the 1990s, in the early 2000s, um, primarily through genetically modified foods, and it is the predominant chemical that inhibits the enzymes in plants and it inhibits, inhibits the enzymes in our bodies. So what we're seeing now is 20, 30 years of 
health issues that are related to glossophates in our food, okay? So, you know, it's like, wait a minute. I go to the grocery store, I eat healthy, but I'm, I'm, my body's not doing well. The second thing is when we go after the pharmaceutical components is that when we go after two things, statins and um, ACE inhibitor blood pressure meds, both of these sort of weaken our systems and our abilities to fight. So what we're really talking about is that we've made ourselves with food and pharmaceutical choices susceptible for things to come in and affect us. So susceptibility isn't just an emotional, wouldn't it be nice if we dealt with those targets? Susceptibility is when we have something that, a weak area that's behind us, around us, right on our shoulder, right in the middle of our head. It doesn't really matter in our voice where we aren't connected, where we aren't flowing in who we are and where we're susceptible for something to come in and derail us, right? So when we have these gaps, when we have these open pathways, we are weakened and we are easy targets. So I put a picture up on the promo for this, both on the video and um, in the event that I promoted on Facebook. And it's a picture of me sort of doing a, like, don't take that picture kind of look. But I covered myself with all these different targets and hot buttons because I wanted to sort of do that image, which is I'm demonstrating what it feels like when those buttons are pushed. So susceptibility is emotional, it's physical, and it's mental, and it plays with the action reaction issues that we, um, we have and it also plays with our denial, right? <laughs> okay, so we really wanna trust the world. We wanna trust our, ourselves, we wanna trust our lovers, we wanna tr our partners, we wanna trust our children, we wanna trust our doctors, we wanna trust our government. Yet there is this connection that when we pay attention to it, we realize that we're not really advocating for ourselves and we've allowed ourselves to be susceptible to be pushed and moved and manipulated by another. I believe that these blind spots, that they're karmic. You know, they, we, we agree, hey, I'm gonna have these weak areas and your job is to push those. Your job is to push those as much as possible so that I learn to pay attention and heal them and close them. This is what karmic you know, relationships, soul partnerships, twin flames are all about. You're gonna hit all of my buttons and I'm gonna to have to heal myself, right? This is just my belief system. You can have whatever you want on how these, these susceptibilities take form, but I believe that they are karmic. And I do a lot of work with family systems, right? And you know, there's this parent-child dynamic. And when the parent and the child flush out a, parent, a, a pattern, that allows them to sort of look at where the target in the herd is and the, and the response that they have with each other, it's like an honor. It is an honor to witness this because the honesty about this is what it is, this is how I feel, this is where it comes from, this is what happens when you push it, this is, you know, and, and we address all of this. So by allowing ourselves to discover this blind spot, these hurts, these wounds, and close that space. You know, what happens is that, you know, someone, something from the outer world no longer has control over you, no longer has influence, and you become sovereign. You become your own person. You say, no, I'm not going to allow that to happen anymore. So an example I would give is that, you know, um, I, because I'm gonna pay, pl um, pull from the parent-child relationship, is that, Let's say you're in a relationship with a daughter and you want to be seen and you want to be heard by her and you want her to come and find you and you want her to come like you and want to be around you. You may have this position that comes from your upbringing, your childhood, right? And it is a needfulness that comes from you towards another person. You need this. You, um, you need this to fill your body, that gap, that spot inside of you, that wound, right? And that's the place, and there's a picture right there on that shoulder where it's like, I need to be seen, I need to be understood, I need to be seen as a good parent, right? And let's say that that, your, that daughter knows this, right? And is irritated by the needfulness, irritated that she has her own stuff going on, and she wants to push you away. And she can push you away and push you away until she feels like you've crossed too far and then she's gonna go zing 
right on that wound and she's gonna push you away, silent treatment, whatever that is. And it's gonna be purposeful and it's gonna be conscious and it might even be unconscious in the realm of how big it is. You show hurt, she shows disgust. <sighs> Now you're just gonna go do this and you don't understand that you're in this This trap of susceptibility, which is you presented a weak area your child picked up on it And they're and you're now gonna play and weave this hurt um, Playback hurt playback hurt playback so the most important thing that we can do is recognize that that's what's going on, right? That's what's happening and so when we have this trap what happens in our inner can be affected and triggered by the outer. Then we now know, okay, Denise got it. Now what am I supposed to do about that? So I got my list. I got about seven things. So hold on here and stay with me and, and, and let's keep, let's do this. So number one, now that you know that there's this system, this process of hurt, respond, hurt, respond. Now it's time to kind of look at it and get curious and go, huh, I got one of those. I know what that is. You want to get curious and you want to go really look at it for the very first time. So, you know, like you got to identify it. I think there's one there. That's the first thing. The second thing is to get courageous. It takes courage to pause, to put things down and go, uh, I'm going to go find out why every single time she says this, I go crazy, right? I go to hurt. I go to whatever. So you now have that courage, which is I, it's time. I'm gonna go do this. Number three, trust that this is the time. Because between the lockdown, between, or sh you know, the lockdown shutdown, between the astrological pullings and pushings and proddings, your stuff is up. You know it, I know it. I'm getting calls every day saying, um, what's going on out there? You know it's time to do this, okay? Um, number four, Take them on one at a time. Do not try to do four or five of these at once. Take them on one at a time. Invite it to show itself to you. It might be a belief, a memory, a pattern, something like, you know, the way that you eat too much, the way you drink too much, the way you keep busyness, the way that you use anger, the way that you use righteousness. And it might even be a health issue. So take them on one at a time, right? Number five, face this with all you've got. Get the support that you need around you. If you can't do it by yourself, go get someone to stand next to you and go, am I seeing this? So it's kind of like you bring it up and you spread all the issues out on the table and you look around and you go, what am I missing? And why, why do, not, uh, do I not understand how this is all working, right? So take that time and, and really face it with all you've got. Um, number six, then rebuild it. You get the choice to rebuild it however you want. Well, okay, I'm gonna put this back together, I'm gonna put this back together, now I understand why I do that, and you're gonna sort of shore it up. And while I was writing this, I kept seeing sort of these old like medieval forts or, or these pioneer frontier um, forts where it's kind of like, my God, are all four sides shored up and am I strong? Are there any weak areas? Because if there are weak areas, you can bet that Saturn's gonna come down and go tap, tap, tap. Uh, you got a weak spot over there in that corner. And that's what's happening, is that we have these weak areas and we're being told to go fix them. And then seven, my favorite one, is share this with your world. Be honest. This is what I've learned. This is what I'm doing about it. This is what I'm going to do in the future. And this is what I'm not going to do in the future. So that you come back and you go, hey, I just realized that I've been in this loop with you for this reason, right? And this has been happening and blah, 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 blah. So you fill it in and you close it off and you seal it and you say, this is who I am. This is what I learned and this is what I'm going to do forward. So the whole point of being able to understand where we're susceptible and where we're not is that once we recognize that all of our energy has been leaking out in these spots and we shore them up, we have space, we have time, we have joy, we have the ability to thrive and grow. So I'm going to invite you to go find out where you're susceptible. And if it's something that you want some assistance with, that's what I'm here for. You can find me on denisedrydencoaching.com and you can watch a lot more of these videos and get some ideas what all those triggers are, okay? You have a great Sunday and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.